Kickmaster for NES. Haven't heard of it? Don't worry, neither did I or pretty much anyone else I've talked to. This was an obscure NES game that had fallen into my hands simply by chance, so it's safe to say I went into it with no prior opinions or feelings about it. Although the cover art may have caught my attention. Ooh, doesn't this guy look badass? So is it good? Is it bad? Let's hop right into it and I'll tell you all about it. Okay, so here's how the story to Kickmaster goes. This peaceful kingdom gets attacked and burned by some evil wizard named Belzed. King and queen are killed, their only daughter, the princess, is kidnapped. Every single member of the royal guard has been defeated except one single knight. Basically, everything's just gone to hell. Anyway, the single knight that's been left over and his younger brother go and try to save the princess. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Let's see how that goes. The two brothers go to save the princess, they confront a skeleton, and the older brother, who's in full armor and has a weapon, is killed instantly. So now you've got to save the princess, using, you guessed it, your martial arts kicking skills. Can't argue with that. Well, your goal is to save the princess, and to do that, you're on a long journey to Belzed's castle. Each stage gets you closer and closer to the castle while dealing with Belzed's dark army of darkness. So right away, I do have to say, your character sort of jumps like he's on the moon. Usually that's a bad thing, but here I think it works okay, because if you get your attacks down right, then you can actually hit the enemies just fine. Another thing I should point out is when you defeat an enemy, a bunch of stuff flies out of them. What is that? This is actually one of the aspects that I think makes this game pretty unique. Unlike most NES platformers, this game has experience points and magic, kind of like an RPG. But how do you get that? Well, when you defeat an enemy, multiple things fly out of them. Health, magic, and experience points. Now this is where I think it gets interesting. There's only a limited amount of time you have to grab any of these items. Now while that may sound annoying to some of you, I think it's actually interesting and it adds some strategy to the game that you wouldn't normally see in something like this. You actually have more of a choice and a chance to get what you need. Say you're low on health, you can go straight for the health. Say you want to level up, then you can go for the experience points. Or you could just try to get all three of them, it's definitely possible. But then that's where the poison comes in. Yeah, that's right, poison. So you really have to pay attention to what you're grabbing. You can't just go in there every time and just try to get everything. Just about every sort of attack that you have is a kick, and he has a lot of them. Yeah, you've got your high kick, vertical press kick, sweep kick, knee drop, slide kick, double front kick, flying kick, including some secret ones that you're not even allowed to see yet. Whoa, 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 this is a lot to take in. Is this really an NES game? Yeah, it is. Well, damn, there sure is a lot of attack choices for a controller with only so many buttons. And of course, for any game with a lot of attacks, it's going to have a lot of enemies to use the attacks on. So, time for an enemy roll call. Yeah, you've got skeletons, grim reaper looking things, demon dogs, flying bat demons, zombies, wizards, lizard knights, and gorillas with capes. Belzad's army is pretty crazy. No wonder the Royal Guards were defeated. So at this point, you may be thinking, Jay, as much as I like kicking enemies to death, is there anything more? Well, along with gaining new types of kicks as you level up, there's also some magic abilities. Oh, the magic attacks. I completely forgot about those. Okay, there's two different ways to obtain a magical ability in this game. The first is beating a boss. You beat a boss, you get a power. This is going to happen simply by you progressing through the game. There's no way to avoid it. You're going to get these powers. The second way, you got to do a little more work. Hidden in almost every level is a second magic ability. It could either be somewhere where it's a little more dangerous and out of your reach, or it could be under a platform somewhere, or if it's like the first level, it could just be a treasure chest that's out in plain sight that you hopefully did not skip over. Most of the magic abilities are pretty helpful. Like for instance in the first level, if you happen to find the magic ability before reaching the boss, it's really helpful. See, you fight this flying witch enemy and she just sort of stays up there in the air while these two other enemies are on the ground attacking you and you gotta keep jumping and hitting her in the face. But if you found the ability which sends these flying orbs up into the air, you could pretty much defeat her no problem. 
See? Piece of cake. Other magic abilities are one that lets you step on dangerous floors, one that gives you a little bit of extra health, one that gives you a little more extra health, I like how it says a lot instead of like double, but anyways. One that summons a massive storm of lightning that just surrounds you. And this one, I'm not even sure what it does. I guess when you use it in certain areas it makes items visible behind stuff, but you can kind of see it anyway, I don't know. So just try out the different abilities on different enemies and bosses and see what works best. So what kind of game is Kickmaster exactly? Is it a platformer? Is it an RPG? Well, there's plenty of side-scrolling jumping action, like in a platformer, but then again, you get experience points and there's big bosses, like an RPG. So you know what? I'm not really sure what kind of game it is, but it's pretty fun and it's pretty unique. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jay, Zelda 2 was like a side-scrolling NES game, and it had experience points and magic and all that. That's true, it did, but Zelda 2 is more of an adventure game. You actually roam around and explore, and there's a map screen where you're actually going from place to place, and you do a lot of stuff before you actually progress through the game. Kickmaster is linear. There really isn't much exploring. You're just going left and right most of the time, sometimes down to up, and you're just getting from the start of the game to the end of the game. It truly is an NES side-scrolling platformer with RPG elements. And hey, it turned out pretty good. Something I should definitely not leave out is the final stage of the game, Belzed's Haunted Tower. So the final stage is basically this lengthy trial of enemies, deadly platforming, stage hazards, and boss after boss after boss. This is probably where I should mention the flying kick maneuver. This move is vital to completing this part of the game. Normal jumping will just not suffice much of the time. See this jump right here? Without the flying kick you're screwed, so make sure to level up. When you finally reach Belzed, you'll be happy to know that she's definitely the hardest boss in the game, so no build-up leading to a weak end boss. You first take out her knights, who by themselves are probably the hardest normal enemy in the game. Then you face Belzed herself. Okay, I know this is kind of late to mention this, but let me talk about the knee drop for a second. Out of all those different moves that you have to choose from, the knee drop is probably the best. Nearly any enemy coming from nearly any conceivable angle is just weak against it, it seems. Time it right and they're dead. You know what, let's just have a quick knee drop montage so you can really see what's up. Knee drop montage, knee drop montage, knee drop, knee drop, knee drop montage, knee drop montage, knee drop montage, knee drop, knee drop, knee drop montage, knee drop montage, yeah! Yeah, the knee drop. Well, now you know what move you're probably going to be using against Belzed. That doesn't mean she's going to go down without a fight. Of course, you've got nothing to worry about, because I've got a trick up my sleeve. The Earthquake. This is the final magic ability that you get in the game, and it's definitely worth the wait. You use it on her, and she's stunned, completely open to attacks. Of course, even then, you can still manage to get yourself hurt if you're not too careful. So just use your life magic when you're low on health, and as long as you have enough magic points, you should be good. Yes! So after Belzed is defeated, your character flies in to save the princess using wings that he now has for some reason. Anyway, they fly off into the sunset whilst Belzed's castle burns to the ground. A fitting ending. It also mentions that the Kickmaster disappeared, never to be seen from again. Why? Probably because the entire kingdom was pretty much destroyed already. What's the princess even going back to? In fact, what did Belzed even want with the princess anyway? Ah well, I guess we can't look too deep into the story of an 8-bit game. And look, the credits actually break the fourth wall, calling you a fellow video gamer. Hmm, never would have guessed that the term gamer was already being used back then. It also says if you press start, you could play again at a harder difficulty. No thanks, Cal. So how can I sum up Kickmaster? It's fun, it's cheesy, and overall it's pretty unique. 
While the animation is limited and the controls aren't the tightest, the visuals and amount of content in the game are actually quite impressive. Now, it's interesting to note that by the time Kickmaster was released, the Super Nintendo had already been on store shelves for quite a while. It's no wonder nobody remembers this game. Everyone was busy moving on to Nintendo's next console. Well that, my friends, was Kickmaster for NES. Not a very well-known game, but very fun. I highly recommend you pick it up if you can. Well, hope you liked the review. There's more coming soon. I'm gonna go watch some Breaking Bad.